Uh, the first thing, don't do it suddenly because I did the keto suddenly. It was hard on my body. I did the keto because I need to go in ketosis. There was on the theory to go in ketosis. So I did three days of, uh, of fasting and then I eat and then I, you know, problematic to go to the toilet and weakness, uh, headaches and stuff like that. So don't do it suddenly. Start to eliminate things. Sugar for first thing. Cut the sugar, cut the grains, and then slowly, slowly cut the, uh, all the other things. And Hello, fellow carnivore enthusiasts. I'm Adam from Carnivore Today, and in today's interview, we're chatting with Dario, the hyper carnivore chef. Whether you're a newcomer contemplating the merits of adopting a carnivore diet or a seasoned practitioner, Dario's story will not only make you ponder the incredible benefits of this lifestyle, but also invigorate your commitment to continue on this path. Before we dive in, please take a moment to subscribe and enable notifications so you're always in the loop with our future videos. Now let's get started. Hello everybody, we're here today with Dario, an Italian that's living in the Netherlands and uh, he has an uh, Instagram account called The Hyper Carnivore Chef. I'm super thrilled to be talking to Dario today and uh, get his knowledge and insight on living a carnivore lifestyle internationally. So thank you for speaking with me today, Dario. I really appreciate nice. it. It's a pleasure for me. Thank you. Awesome. Can, can you start off by letting everybody know a little bit about yourself in terms of your age, you know, where you're from, yeah. your family, things like that? So I'm, uh, I'm Italian from Napoli. I'm uh, 44 years old. Uh, yeah, I live here in Netherlands. It's uh, from after the Corona crisis, uh, 2021. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's three years. Actually, July. I came here in 2012, so July uh, I made three years in the in the Netherlands. And yeah, we we are living here. Uh, we really really like really like to live in the Netherlands. Before I, we, I'm a kind of international um, uh, worker because I've been before we were in the Philippines. I work in Myanmar, I work in Middle East, uh, I work in the U.S. when I was younger, when I was 20 years old, so yeah. And uh, actually, that's the, the best place. Uh, uh, I, I just wish I, I moved here earlier because I really, really like here. Here, people like really to live outdoor and uh, it's my kind of lifestyle, so yeah. That's cool. So do you have uh, any, any family there with you? Yeah, my, my partner here, my girlfriend, and uh, we have two kids. One uh, is six years old and uh, four years old, my son, the younger one. They go to wow. school here and they already speak Dutch very well. And yeah, it's, it's amazing how kids uh, learn uh, language so fast. That's awesome. So you guys have at least three languages in your family, right? Yeah, because I'm, my partner, she's from Philippines, she speaks Tagalog. Uh, we don't speak Tagalog at all in the family. The kids didn't get it except some few words, uh, the bad words, uh, stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, that's the first word, the first word you learn uh, when you speak another language. Uh, then we speak English between each other. Uh, my, my daughter is used to speak Italian much better because we live a little bit in Italy just after uh, March 2020, uh, October 2019 to March 2020. We live in Italy. So she start to speak Italian with my mama, my, my her grandmother. But uh, now she understands, but mostly uh, it was my fault. I, I should have talk to her in Italian more, but, uh, yeah, now she speaks English and Dutch very, very nicely and understand the Italian quite too, quite well. That's impressive. <laughs> That's very impressive. Awesome. So, um, I'm very proud. I'm very proud. Yeah, that is really, really, uh, really cool. So I understand that you've had some success with weight loss, uh, and in particular it's on a certain way of eating. Man. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, I, I tell you, let's say I did many kinds of diet in my life. I, I'm a chef. I'm a curious person, interested person. And I always uh, did uh, the diet to lose weight. You no, know? um, when I, when I was 15, 16 years old, I was, uh, doing a profession, professionally. I mean, every day I was going to row, uh, canotage, we call it. It's the kind of row that you go. Know, like this, and you go backward with the small boat, and then we are uh, four, eight people in, in the boat uh, rowing. And uh, I was doing that, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, it's professional, like uh, every day, every day, but I was six, I was not paid to do it, but we were going there and train and train and train. So I, we were training a lot. School in the morning, 
all afternoon on the boat or in the gym and playing, running. So I was like an athlete when I was that age. So I used to eat a lot because I used to need a lot of uh, this thing that I ate, this bad word called calories. I used to need a lot of calories. And uh, then when I stopped, because I could not do the both things, uh, and I was too young, I wanted to go out and enjoy life. And I, I was so tired in the evening, I never went out. And if you go out and you drink a little bit, you're, you're, you cannot train the day after like before. And then uh, I had to choose something and I could not choose, don't, don't go to school. That was my first option, but my family didn't agree. So uh, I chose to quit, to quit the rowing and then uh, I start to gain weight. From that moment on, uh, uh, like it was, uh, uh, like a line up, and then um, every month I was fatter and fatter and fatter. Then my mother said, "Start to do reduce. Don't eat fat. Don't eat oil. You know the classic uh, uh, low fat, uh, low protein diet that they tell you to do. Uh, maybe you can have a cake, but not a steak. So I was like kind of crazy." Uh, because there was a lot of misinformation, there was no internet at the time, and uh, yeah, that just followed the guidelines of the the doctor. Then, right? so I, after a while, many years after, I start to try different kind of diet. So I did the the vegan diet for a while, and also the the raw uh, fru- fruitarian, fruitarian. I don't know how to say that. The yeah. one that you eat only fruit for uh, for the summer time, actually for two months. And all this diet that I did, I did also intermittent fasting, uh, oh, Monday eating one time a day, but whatever I want, but only one time. All this kind of diet made me lose weight, made me feel better. But I was suffering uh, uh, internally because, I, I, for example, for the oh, Monday, I, I eat now and I say, oh, I cannot eat until when you finish to eat, you're already thinking. I cannot eat anymore until tomorrow. And then uh, after you have right. the spike, uh, like you are get hungry in the evening, for example, uh, and you cannot eat. So it's, you are uh, suffering, you're in pain because you want to eat, but you just try to resist. So mm-hmm. it's a torture, basically, this kind of diet. Uh, you're, you're fustigating yourself uh, on the altar of, uh, of looking better because that was just my uh, thing. Just try to don't look so chubby because at the end, you look in the mirror, you don't see, don't recognize yourself. No, it's not a matter of be pretty or be handsome or be ugly. It's a matter that the person you see in the mirror is not the person you have in your mind. So that, that's why you, you kind of do this kind of, uh, of diet. Then uh, the only one that, that made me uh, unable, uh, I know, as I say, uh, made me strong enough to don't have cravings. And I'm not resisting when when the people tell congratulations i answered them it was easy it is easy and i have to be easy because if it's difficult and it's too difficult you can do it for a while but you cannot live a life of, of suffering and checking uh, what time it is when you when you can eat or how many calories or not when i was doing the ketogenic diet that was the best i did for losing weight i lost a lot of weight with the ketogenic but I was there counting the macros, the micros, the checking the app, uh, what can I eat, uh, mm-hmm. nibble, uh, and then with this diet, I eat how much I want until I don't want to eat anymore. And then if I am hungry two times a day, I eat two times. If I am hungry three times, I eat three times. And normally, if I have like a normal schedule life, like I go, I, I bring the kids to school, I, I eat around 11, 30, 12 in the morning, and then I go to work. I, I eat once a day because I, that's how I feel comfortable. I don't feel to eat anymore. Even if I'm a chef, I work in the restaurant. I have food everywhere under my eyes, but I'm not attracted to any of this. That's awesome. And, uh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, 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 I lost my tail thought. Perfect. So let's go for the next question. <laughs> so you know, the weight loss, uh, so ah, you yes. know, you, you, do you have like a starting lost, number roughly? I, then, I, I, yes. Allora, I. I started this diet and not for the losing weight. I didn't care anything about the losing weight. In fact, I bought a scale uh, weeks ago or one month ago, stuff like that. I didn't have a scale at home. I didn't care. I started to notice that my clothes were falling off. I had to change. And people tell me, ah, you're losing weight, you're losing weight. But it was not my goal because my goal, I, I was health. I study and I researched this 
diet for health. So the numbers were in March, when I start, uh, I was 115 kilo. That is basically the double number in pounds. Right. And uh, now uh, I'm 86 kilo. Wow. Oh, that's impressive. So it's on 30 kilo, almost 30 kilo I lost. So it's 60, 64 pounds. But Amazing. without, uh, yeah. Without uh, working out, without uh, checking the scale every day, without going crazy, because uh, my, my, my goal was checking the symptoms that I had. And when the symptoms were going away one by one, and then the strength arrived in me, and then I, I lost weight, but I lost fat. No, the difference with the ketogenic is that when I still have the picture when I did the ketogenic diet and I look weak, thinner. Mm -hmm face like a little bit weak the uh, arm now uh, i my arms stay the same my muscles stay the same my girlfriend she touched me like is you like you're made of wood like you're made of stone what happened to your body nice like i'm going to the gym but i'm not going to the gym i don't i don't lift i i will i will i will do it uh, uh i will uh, organize myself i already bought the gym i just need to put it together um i will Work out also because now, yeah, why not? Now that I, the fat is gone, why not to shape up a little bit better? But I'm more active for sure. I work more. I feel energetic. When I'm going around with my kids, I run around. Uh, in the way we go to the beach, we run on the beach and stuff like that. I'm much, much more active. I bike. I use, I, and last year in January, February, I was thinking to buy an e bike like the old people. And I, <laughs> and I, because the, in Netherlands, everything is flat, but there is a couple of things that you have to go up and down, uh, where I live, and then oh, I need to go up and then down, or oh, better buy any bike. Go ready to spend 2,000 euros for any bike. And then uh, in March, April, I say, why, why any bike? I want a nice uh, sport bike. You know, I, bo I bought this uh, normal uh, mountain bike, uh, hybrid, let's say hybrid mountain bike that you can, I can use in the city with the normal tires, with the CD, CD tires. And I'm using that. I also bought uh, something to connect to the bicycle, uh, like a trailer, and I put my kids and I bring oh, them nice. around. And I, I have the strength to bring them everywhere. I don't get tired. Before I get up there, if I walk a little bit, I have palpitation, I have uh, like this. If I do stairs mm -hmm. before, I, uh, and I thought, yeah, because I'm getting old. Yeah, I'm overweight, but I'm 44, I'm getting old. No, it's not that. I'm 44, I feel better than when I was 15 now. It's, That's awesome. It's what, it's what we eat. It's our, uh, yeah. you know, the thing that convinced me to do this kind of diet is the logic behind that. That's mm -hmm. the thing that's a, the an ancestral way of eating, the logic behind the, the fact that the uh, Homo sapiens exists from seven, five, zero, 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 zero years. I, I say mm -hmm. that by English, 75,000, 7,500,000 uh, years. Yes. Yep. And, yep. uh, and uh, we only had the ch possibility to eat meat because because there wasn't much else. There was the ice age. Mm -hmm. So if you do like uh, evolutionary thinking, how how a, a, an animal can adapt to another way of eating, totally different, switching from fat and protein to to carbs and sugar mm -hmm. in uh, so much less time compared to the time that uh, he was eating uh, fat and proteins. So, so this thing, make, I didn't know, I didn't think about it. Then when I saw uh, Dr. Chaffee talking about this thing, talking about how it's the intestine and everything, all the science behind this, it makes so much sense. And so why the doctor never told me this thing? Why nobody, even in school, we never talk about it. Uh, yeah, hunter-gatherer, hunter-gatherer. It was like, yes, we were hunter-gatherer. Yes, we were. But so what does it mean? It means that for... The existence of Homo sapiens and for the bit, for the billion of, uh, million of years before when, uh, uh, we were uh, other kind of, uh, rates uh, of uh, mm. humans, but still, uh, uh, carnivore apes. We were carnivore apes. So for millions of years, we eating meat and fat. And now in so less time, so small window, we start to eat uh, carbs from, let's say, from, uh, the summer time uh, that we start to grow crops in the in Middle East, and not even everywhere in the world, in the Middle East. And then after in last 100 years, we start to grow a lot with the machines and stuff. And now in the last 20, 30 years, we 
no, maybe more, from the 70s, we start to use things that are totally artificial. Of course, we get all sick and tired and lazy. It's logic. That's why say, when I saw the logic in that, I say, this makes sense. Let me try. And then in one month, I said, the miracle. It's like a miracle because I felt, I, no, I was working like this. And then I start, I start, I find myself more straight working straight. I get tired and then didn't get tired anymore. I was happier. My mood to get better. I was at work and I was singing, cooking. I said, why am I singing? I'm cooking. What, what happened? What the, what, why? What happened to me? So, <laughs> so many awesome. things. I can, yeah. So, so, go, so don't stop me sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you are obviously eating carnivore. Is anyone else in your family eating carnivore? Hello, my son is a uh, natural carnivore. Let's say like that. Uh, uh, he refuses pasta. He likes pizza. Okay, all kids like pizza, but no, pizza for me is the Italian pizza with the good quality tomato with the real mozzarella, not the uh, industrial. I don't want to say any brand, but let's say consider all the brand. They are crap for me. The only good one is the small uh, restaurant where you can know the pizzaiolo and you can see the tomato can and what the ingredients they put there. So yes, the, I only bring them, I mean, I'm an Italian chef from Napoli, so I always go for the quality food. But now for me, some, some of these things that are still quality food, for me, are not food anymore. I don't consider this food. Can, I can consider them uh, uh, like uh, something to enjoy, like uh, a cheat uh, uh, kind of thing, like, uh, like a drug, let's say like that, but uh, not uh, something to rely on for the energy. So my son like uh, always to eat uh, meat, and uh, because you know my partner is from Philippines, we eat, uh, they eat rice. So oh, he always normally he refuse pasta with sauces or this kind of thing. He always eat the, the meat with some rice and some fruit, and that's what he wants to eat uh, uh, normally, and uh, he, that's what he likes. My daughter more uh, more Italian uh, side, so she always, always eat uh, pasta. But now from when I do that, and then they see what's different. And maybe I'm a little bit boring at home because I only talk about <laughs> things. Yeah. So uh, I, I see them, you know, I see them that they, they see me like an example. They see that it's working. They see Papa, how strong it is, how much fun it is now uh, playing with me. And uh, before you know, I was kind of uh, lazy, stay on the couch and watch TV or uh, the cell phone and uh, Play with them, but not so much, not like, uh, because I didn't feel well. Uh, and now I do and I want, and I, it's, I, it's not something that I, that I force myself to do. It is come natural to be yeah, more, uh, awesome. I wish that I had found this way of eating when my kids were little. They're, they're 25, 26, grown and gone, <laughs> but, uh, they, they can see me the incredible shrinking man now. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, you uh, saw my picture, right? I was, uh, oh, one, yeah. I was yeah. before, yes. Yeah, your pictures were, they're incredible. And I can't wait to yeah. show everybody. You're, you're, you were obviously inflamed before. And now you're right. like, whoop, shrunk way yeah. down. It's awesome. They say that the two negative things of this diet is that you need to spend so much money for buying new clothes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and then I, I also had this, uh, um, it's a thing that I, I wish I didn't have because, uh, no, have you seen the interview of Jordan Peterson say that uh, when you do this kind of diet, it does the lion diet because for health reason and, uh, you are on hunting mode. So I say you are a hunting mode, like you are focused, you are, but being a hunting mode means for me that any noise in the night wakes me up. So. That's my, the only thing that is negative for me because uh, I have to, if I, if I don't sleep well for two, three days, I need to sleep alone because uh, I need to sleep because uh, if my son, for example, cough or whatever, he wakes me up because I'm like uh, ready to, to, to jump. Uh, that's, we don't live in the forest anymore. Uh, where there is no lion going to, to bite me. So uh, it's like probably some ancestral uh, reaction that I see I have. But yeah, that's probably the only negative, let's say like that. You might maybe can be useful uh, in the future. You never know. Yeah, that's awesome. So in terms of, so since you live in the Netherlands, 
um, what is uh, shopping and eating out and things like that uh, like for you? In the regards to carnivore. Horrible disaster. The worst experience ever. But already before, right? I, I, the problem that I have high standard. I always had high standard in food because of my job. Because where I come from, I come from the city that is the capital of pizza in the world. It's the capital of uh, of good food in Italy. It's like that. Uh, the tomatoes, the things are coming uh, from our our lands. From the, the San Marzano is the most famous tomato in the world. The, the most the better tomato in the world. It's coming from a place close to my city. Uh, Amalfi Coast is famous for the food. It's the most concentration of, uh, of, uh, uh Michelin star restaurant, uh, uh, close to each other. Let's say for the square kilometer. So I, I always had a uh, high time that for me already going out here in Netherlands, uh, I don't want to talk too much bad about this thing, but for <laughs> me, for me was, uh, eating here in general was not good. Now, it's even worse because uh, I limited my choice. It's all no, no fun. So there is a many steakhouse or something like that, but being a chef and knowing that with 30 euro, I can buy one kilo of meat when 30 euro buy steak in the restaurant. It doesn't make sense much. Plus you need to rely on uh, the thing that they don't use uh, vegetable oil on the grill and stuff like that. And I cannot really know if they do it or not. So I, do, I prefer to don't go out or happened to me when my father was here last week came to visit us we went out i went with them i drink water and i enjoy anyway i don't care but the fact that i i don't i don't get hungry seeing people eating so it's easy it's not that oh, i'm i'm tough and i i'm the better man and i resist to cravings i don't have cravings i don't care i don't want to eat the thing the ramen that you're eating it might be tasty but i know that if i eat that i go back to feel like i was before and uh, I don't want to feel like it was before. When I was doing the other diet, also I feel better than uh, when I was totally inflammated and, and eating carbs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I never felt like now, and there is no comparison. I made the uh, um, stupid meme on, 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 on with uh, an app that uh, it's the it's a movie that this guy that they take the LSD and the uh, one is guy like this and the other guy is like that because one is the 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 high is coming and the other guy is already know that he, what's happening to you. And I, uh, and I wrote that, uh, uh, my friend uh, is a uh, carnivore for one month. It's like, what's happening to me? And the other one, uh, I know what's happening to you because it's <laughs> carnivore from six months. And then that is uh, the feeling and the, the energy that you have with this diet, this diet, this way of eating, the, the eating normal, the human food. I mm -hmm. can barely say the proper human uh, food eating the proper human food make you 100 percent human before we we it's like putting sugar in, uh, in your engine so you are slow down and you don't realize because you don't know how fast you can go so if you think it's, that is your maximum speed but it's not you can be stronger you can be faster you can be smarter the brain fog is gone everything is the, the color are brighter the, the with scales, I see better. It's, everything is better. I mean, it's, you have the list of things that I improved. It's, I, I, I had to write it down because I cannot remember so many things. I, I <laughs> had so many problems at my, this way of eating feet. So yeah, I'm right there with you. I had to write them all down and over. I mean, I didn't start writing them down until maybe three months in because I'm like, man, I need to start writing this down because I'm actually forgetting stuff, you know, and then watching yeah. other people talk about it. I'm like, oh yeah, that, oh, yeah, that's me too. gone. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Exactly. That's exactly. funny. So what other uh, victories have you had that's non-scale? I mean, I remember you saying that you, you have uh, less brain fog and things like that. So what other maybe serious conditions have uh, you had? Zero. zero I, I, because I told you I wrote it down, so let's go through the things because otherwise uh, I, so the, the thing that made me start to look in uh, this kind of diet is a symptom that uh, uh, this diet didn't fix because it's not related to the diet, but the, the symptom made me so scared to start to look for this thing. I had, I have this thing called a CS, uh, CHS that is cannabinoid hyperimesis syndrome that is basically vomiting. Uh, uh, for no reason. The reason is, uh, connected to weed and uh, smoking weed. And now I don't smoke anymore weed. And I don't smoke from only one month. 
not from six months. So there's no correlation with this uh, improvement and the fact that I smoke, I quit smoking weed because the only thing that was still there every now and then it, after I smoke, I had to vomit. So, and wow. there is correlation, but this problem made me look into this uh, health related diet. And I see all the doctor, uh, all the doctor, in a way or another, were going to this can car carnivore uh, way of eating. So that was the one that made me uh, start to do that. So uh, that was not fixed. That is fixing only if you quit. This diet gave me the strength to stop with in two days. I didn't have cravings. I didn't think about weed anymore. I don't care. I have a weed at home. I'm in the Netherlands, legal here. I have a weed at home. I have it to don't smoke it. So I do. I know that I don't smoke it not because I don't have it. Because I don't want to smoke it. So it's downstairs. If I want, I go down and I make one, but I will not because I don't care. Awesome. That is uh, awesome. The other things were the palpitation. That's the hardest uh, thing. I was really scared because my heart went into two. So for no reason, I woke up like normal and then suddenly, da -da 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 -da. and then I did the, the uh, check by my heart with the doctor. And they said, your heart is okay, but you have high blood pressure, blah, blah, blah. They want to give me medication and I didn't take medication because uh, I don't want to take medication. That's why also I researched this diet to lower the blood pressure. I was checking the natural way to lower the blood because I see the people entering this uh, wheel of uh, medication and you start to one and then another and another and then another. And then you, you start to end up like my grandmother that I remember she was like taking it's like morning to evening like what time is it? Blah, blah, blah. What time is it? Blah, blah. And then I, I, I didn't know. I said, I, I want to die. I die. I prefer to die than live like that. So I will go take a horse and ride, uh, <laughs> ride in the sunset, <laughs> but I will not, I will not uh, get all this medicine. I had a sleep apnea, severe sleep apnea. I had 70 episodes a night of, of apnea. I get to the doctor. They put the machine on me. They check. Uh, this, uh, how many, and then the doctor was scared. He said, listen, this is serious. Uh, you have 70 up there every night. So we have to do something. Mm -hmm. And after one month of this diet, I checked myself again because I said, doctor, I feel better. I, my, my partner tell me that you snore less. You, it's less, uh, these things that you are going like you cannot breathe. And I uh, you know it's probably for the brain. It's a problem for the heart to, to have sleep up. It's a serious thing. And, uh, and I, and in one month, from 70, I had 20. So the doctor told me, ah, maybe you didn't put the, mach the machine well. What, why? What did you do? You, you moved it early. No, I did exactly the same thing. But from 70, in one month, went to 20. And then after my, I, I, I just, I, I saw that there's an app you can download to register your snoring in the night. So I did it and I don't, I snore a little bit still, but I don't have up anymore. My mouth inside, I can feel it when my tongue is changed. Before it was soft and big, and now it's hard. The, 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 the arc, let's say, mm -hmm. changed, changed the shape. So that's why I, I don't have up any anymore because there's nothing to close my throat. So then that's where, and then the, the fact to wake up two or three times every night or even more sometimes to go to toilet to pee. It was a pre-diabetic symptoms. I don't know because I don't do blood tests because I'm kind of person that prefer to don't know bad news. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a good art. Me to too. Life. Yeah. But I, I just, do, I don't do it anymore. I, if I, if I go before I go to sleep, I wait in the morning. I do, I don't wake up again in the toilet. I go to the toilet. Unless I got to woken up by some noise. Then, uh, uh then I say, okay. okay. Then uh, I have all the inflammation things like a uh, joint pain. Something fell down. I need to pick it up. I say, ah, oh, my knee, the other knee, my shoulder, the elbow. One thing uh, also happened to me that uh, it was, it's uh, for my um, physiotherapist was uh, unbelievable, mind blowing. I cannot believe that. I broke my arm uh, end of June and uh, I fell from the bicycle. And I broke my rad, uh, no radius, the Mason one fracture of the radius. Yes. It's a, it's a small fracture here. It's the best uh, fracture you can get. So it's not broken so bad, but anyway, you, the, the, this kind of, uh, of a problem make you unable to do many things. And, uh, the improvement have to be slow. And, uh, they told me in 12 weeks, uh, you will be like, uh, I was in six weeks. Half time. 
I wow. did everything, all the schedule progress, half time. I did everything enough time. You, you will be able to do this in, in two weeks. I, I did it in the weeks up. You will be able to do this in six weeks. I did it in three weeks. You will be able to be, be at this point in 12 weeks. I was totally healed in six weeks. So, <laughs> uh, awesome. it, it, I, in fact, I, I, I need to uh, interview this guy because, uh, it's a, I never saw stuff like that. So I want to make a video and also there is a place here in the Netherlands called, uh, uh, called, uh, uh, Ancestral Health Foundation Netherlands. And they also agree for the interview because they also promote uh, ancestral way of eating uh, um, and this kind of thing. So uh, I, I, I will uh, update you on, on these things. Yeah, sure. uh, so let's go to the symptoms. Joint pain, discomfort, uh, discomfort, a lot joint pain. Brain fog, we already talked. Sometimes it was confusion. Sometimes I was driving and I missed the exit because my, uh, my head was somewhere else. Like, oh, and like, I missed time. What that? I was kidnapped by aliens and then put back in the car. <laughs> well, why am I, I'm, I'm to exit after what happened to me? So it's like serious or well, even talking too much. Give me, uh, uh, brain fog. Let's say like that. Uh, talking, talking, talking. Now I can talk for hours and I, uh, everything is good. Uh, IBS six times, five times go to the toilet uh, and uh, it was not uh, nice. It was not a, uh, Experience of it uh, was uh, uh, interesting. Gastritis, reflux, all gone. Uh, uh, my gums. I after the lockdown, I experienced pain in my my tooth, my gums. You no, know, living uh, without uh, sunlight. Or uh, every time I eat something hard, it was uh, it was painful for me. So I went to the dentist, and the dentist uh, cleaned my thing, and then he said, hey, "This is uh, it's gonna only get worse." You only get worse, and then every two, every thought months, you need to come back, and then we need to uh, uh, clean. I don't know technically what they have to do. And now my gums regrow, and they look pink, like uh, uh, healthy, and they never look so nice. Before they was uh, dark, and and I don't feel I can eat steak, uh, and I don't feel any pain. Uh, it's gone. That's and, awesome. the, and, and the and the and the dentist said this thing only can get worse, but it's getting bad. So without taking any <laughs> medicine, doing any surgery or, or, or nothing. Did and he, then did he, ask, general, did he ask, did he ask why? No, but I never went back again. Why? I don't need, okay. I mean, I need to go clean my tooth because I don't smoke anymore. So I feel a little bit of brown thing. I want to do some right. cleaning, but, uh, uh, but I don't have a reason to go to the dentist anymore. And then in general it was the laziness that was uh, the, the very, very bad thing for my family. Let's say like that. Uh, Laziness. Also, like smoking, I don't want to promote to smoking weed, but smoking weed before was an experience, like uh, smoke and then, well, die. And smoking weed during the carnival was uh, I smoke and like a bicycle and go around. But then I had this trouble with the CHS, so I took it, but okay, it's okay. I, I don't miss it. It's, I, I'm good anyway. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I, I go to carnival, carnival high. So, <laughs> yeah. no need other thing. Natural high. That's awesome, man. Yeah, natural high, yes. Well, man, that's incredible. All the things that have uh, subsided and, and reversed and been fixed just by eating steak. <laughs> yeah. That's steak, incredible. organs, I eat liver, I eat uh, uh, everything, like say, from, from head to toe, it's like that. Okay, nice. So let's shift gears for a second. What, yes. what kind of things do you like to do for, for a hobby or for fun? Well, I really like to be outdoor. Uh, anything that is outdoor uh, doing, uh, uh, living outdoor, uh, uh, is for me something that gives me uh, uh, enjoying. I uh, do a barbecue. Uh, here in Nether, it's so nice. There's so many bike uh, trails in the, in the forest, in the woods. I bought a house. We are moving in uh, November. And the house is next to this place called Beast Bosch. That is a natural forest uh, reserve in the Netherlands. You can go with the boat, you can kayak there. I just take the kayak, I go to a hill, I go downhill, I put the kayak in the river, and I can kayak for hours uh, anywhere. I can bike, uh, these bike trails. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the thing that I like. I like to cook. Uh, and uh, now I'm finding uh, enjoyment in eating. Like uh, uh, before, uh, eating was uh, uh, was something uh, that give you endorphin. Let's say that now when I eat, I I feel like. Uh, I don't know, like a lion that uh, 
stick, the see, I see the fat melting. Eh? Give give me the goosebumps. No, this guy, this guy don't. Eat. That's awesome. Yeah, if I had lived anywhere near you and you were cooking, I'd probably feel exactly the same way. The food that you post online is just it's next oh, level, God. man. Next level. I'm I'm trying to do more because now my kids were in vacation and it's hard to do anything with them around. Uh, and also this house where we live is, is small, it's a temporary house because we bought the house, it's, it's going to be ready in November. So when I move there, I will organize better with the light and try because I have background in photography. When I, pardon, when I was in America, in North Carolina, I was too young for this kind of job. I mean, it was for me a lot of uh, sacrifice. No, everybody go out Saturday, Sunday, and then you work Saturday, Sunday. But in America, there is this thing, I mean, North Carolina, that two in the morning, everything closed. I'm European. I'm used to go out at two in the morning and come back home at seven in the morning. And then every right. day, ding, 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 let's go for alcohol. Oh, let's go work. I just arrive. <laughs> and then uh, I just finish my shift at uh, 12 and take a shower and arrive here. And then uh, 30 minutes, you close the bar. What's the lodge? But well, anyway, American thing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so it was hard for me to live like that. No, only 21, 22 years old, only work and, uh, and, uh, Work and work, work and work, work and work, double shifts in the restaurant. It was like kind of paying the restaurant on from, uh, people that are, uh, uh, part of my family. Let's say like that. So I cannot say, okay, I did my eight hours. I go, uh, uh, like you start in the morning, you finish when you finish. You know, the, that's uh, the, the mentality I was. So that's why I say I don't want to do it anymore. I did some, uh, my passion was photography. I, when I was 12 years old already develop uh, films, uh, you know, like I used to say, a print, yeah. a print uh, in the school and uh, I was in media school and uh, I had inspiration for photography. So I said, let's do some study. I did the online course online. Not, there was no, it was like, uh, they sent it by mail and then you mm -hmm. study and then you send the picture and uh, you have the evaluation. There was the New York Institute of Photography. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned the technical skills also for, for photography, for putting lights in the studio, stuff like that. So. I did this passion and, uh, when I went back to Italy after the American experience, I went to work in the, in the, uh, resorts, taking picture to tourists and sell the pictures, uh, to, uh, to the tourists uh, in the resort, no, like, uh, uh, family, uh, eating in the restaurant, other uh, people on the beach, uh, like photo shooting to girls, like model photo shootings. And right. that's, that's why I have also, you see, my food, uh, look good. Yeah. A little bit is, is the, the photographer in me, they make it look better than, no. uh, the many other people food will look good. What is, is, is taken from the right, uh, with the light, right lights and, the, and the right, uh, um, perspective, let's say. Yeah. We, we share something in common because I own a photography business. So oh, I'm, a, I'm a photographer also full time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah cool. So I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Cool. That's awesome. Very good. That's why, that's why your lights are perfect. <laughs> right yeah I, when i started the fantastic. youtube channel i was like well this should be fairly easy because i already have all the lighting you know yeah 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 and then i know i noticed the uh, first thing right. when you're a photographer you see the light in a different way yeah. so you know you things that other people don't notice uh, uh you know you, uh, you notice so yeah that's the first thing i notice on your channel that uh, your light setup is professional uh, that's it uh, that's the word and you are sitting close to a window aren't you yeah. So if you're not artificially oh, oh, oh. lighting it by a window with natural light, uh, is, is and I have also a, a lamp in my face. Okay, nice. So both things: a window here and the lamp in my face, okay. just to compensate because the sun is going down. Right. Yeah. Cool. So uh, you're an outdoorsman. You're a carnivore. So yeah. one one thing that you. Uh, had sent me a note about, and I want to uh, get your perspective on this. Is you said that farmers in the in the Netherlands face Thailand, challenges. Yes. Yeah, they, they face challenges with the government. Um, yeah. Can you kind of tell us a little bit okay. about that? I I don't have all the details, but you know, I was in the news everywhere. So basically, for some stupid reason, the government said that the farmers are producing too much too much. Uh, Azoto, are you, are they say Oh my God, I don't know the English word. Uh, uh, anyway, it's something that is, um, the 99% of what is in the air. <laughs> like, right. 
something that is everywhere. It's a, it's a, a nothing pollution. It's, it's all because of this thing. Uh, we, they need to cut the, the farm uh, numbers. They want to buy out the land. They're not even like uh, buying, making offers that are like ridiculous. They are also kind of fair offer for what I understood. Maybe I'm wrong, but what I understood is paid. But why you have to force people to close and limit uh, the amount of, uh, sorry for that. I, can, I cannot remember this word again. If you can Google it, Azoto in English, uh, Azoto is Italian word, is the, is the thing that they are uh, making the, the farmers guilty about, about this. Maybe you, after you, you can write it down uh, in, uh, in the, in the, carbon, carbon, is it like a climate no, it's, change? No, it's not even carbon. It's still related to the carbon. Uh, it's still related to the climate change. But yeah, it's not even carbon. It's something that's even more in the air. So it's like we break it all the time. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, so they they did protests last year, uh, and then uh, there was uh, uh, many many problem uh, with the with the police. And they they, they but here the Netherlands is different from Italy. That's why I did it like here. Because people don't let the uh, government tell them what to do. If the government is exaggerating, the people will go down and, 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 and ride. They, I, I saw this beautiful thing one day. They went with the, uh, a tractor full of manure and they start to throw manure on, on, in front of Parliament. Uh, I said, yeah, I, I wish I was there. I wish I was there. It was orgasmic. Yeah, they deserve it because they, 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 that's what they are, these people. They do what they deserve. This, uh, Politicians that are uh, basically uh, people that had miracle in their life without skill and anything, and just to obey to the uh, to the big boss, they became uh, people with power, with money, with the possibility to travel everywhere in the world. Uh, people they look for power, uh, they enjoy power. It's the worst uh, people uh, in the world. True, I'm right there with you. I believe that as well. Um, so. So I, I, for me, for what I can do for my small thing, I go, only go buy food from the farmer. I have this farmer lady that I go there, truly her name, and then I always go there and I buy raw milk from her, I buy the cheese from her, I buy the meat from her, I buy egg, uh, butter, they make homemade butter from raw milk, it's fantastic. Whatever I can buy from them, sometimes they have fruit, I bring it home for the kids and stuff, and I, whatever I can buy from them, I, uh, I buy from them. I try to go to the supermarket, less possible. Uh, to buy just the, uh, the things like uh, cat food or stuff like that. Other things uh, I buy from my suppliers, Italian, because anyway, I have connection for Italian restaurants, so I buy directly from my suppliers. So I, I try to, if all these supermarkets get will close, I would be a happy people, happy man. Because uh, there, that's the worst thing, the big distribution. Everything that is big is bad. Uh, small community, local farmers. Uh, I mean, why you have to go to buy the milk? Uh, from the lady that they sell it here in the, in the city where I live, when you can go directly to the farm, you enjoy, you see the person in the eye. And even, it's even, it can be cheaper not to buy directly there. So, yeah. So I wish everybody will start uh, to, to, to go local. And, uh, it's also, it's, you feel better inside if you do like that. There, we're definitely seeing a little bit of a shift like that here in the United States, but still, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's too too many big big box stores out yeah. there. Numbers are not there yet, right? So you had mentioned to me that you are possibly thinking of starting something called the Carnivore Club. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Yes, uh, that's a project. Um, so basically, uh, if we join more people, or oh, it become like a pack of uh, of carnivores, then we can buy directly from the farmers in bigger quantity and uh, also saving money for me, for, for, for us uh, because the, the, the quantity I can buy is limited, but if we have 10 people buying and then we, then we become 50 or 100 and buy big, big quantity of meat, uh, we can save money, help the farmers. So that's the idea. It's uh, still a work in progress. Next month uh, in September, it's my accountant is coming back. So I have to talk to him how to legally start to do stuff like that. My, my other wish is to, no, I, I've been to Rotterdam, no? And there is this place called, uh, Markt Hall, that is, uh, one of the bis- biggest food hall, uh, in the Europe. So there's so many food stall and I could not eat anything there. The only place probably where I could eat something was the burgers, burger place. Now I, I had to go there and say, 
a burger, but without anything, please don't put the, any oil on the grill, blah, blah, blah. So it, it, there's no, nothing carnivore, but all of them, mostly of them, at least, they have vegan and vegetarian option. So why there is always a vegan option? Why there is always a vegetarian option? And if you ask for a carnivore option, they look at you like you are uh, crazy. <laughs> right. What's wrong yes. with you? I, went, I was in the airport waiting for my father. I, to, I was hungry because there was a problem, two hours delay for the luggage and stuff. And I get hungry and I went to, to Burger King and I say, can I have a burger, but just the meat? And uh, the Whopper is one hundred percent beef, but only the meat without anything. And I, so like the explanation took time to explain. And then after that, are you sure? No bread, not. And where I put, put it in the paper, I don't care. And then I was eating the meat only. And the people there around me, they are, ah, this guy, something is wrong with him. So there's always a vegetarian option. There is always, uh, there's in hundreds of food stalls, there is na- na- there is nothing to give you carnivore option, or at least a carnivore stall. Let's say have a carnivore food truck that make only carnivore meat with the, with the big, uh, thing, no vegetable oil, no, uh, vegetable products, hundred uh, percent, uh, animal fat, hundred percent, uh, uh, real meat. And then we can do a recipe. You can do slow cooked things. We can do burgers, we can do steaks, we can do million things. No, we can work out and put things together and make different, even to have different consistency, it's enjoyment for the mouth. So if you, if you have like a soft steak with some crunchy, uh, bre- uh not bread, just some crunchy, uh, ground beef. So you already have two different consistency. And then maybe you have some liver that is a uh, different liver. So you have three different consistency when you eat and then the butter uh, and then you have uh, your mommy and all the taste. In- in your mouth, ah. and they have different consistency of some crispy bacon or whatever. And then you, and you don't have to stay to eat, take a steak, a steak, a steak, and then it becomes a little bit boring. Then you can make some cream with the, with the uh, egg yolks and stuff like that. Egg yolks, a little butter. I, I'm start, I cannot eat white eggs. White eggs are uh, hard for my stomach. So uh, I love omelette. So I'm making omelette only with egg yolk and raw milk. And basically, they have the same consistency of, of a normal omelette with a white uh, and uh, white egg and egg yolk. So I'm, I'm still uh, learning. No, I'm, I'm re- re- reinventing my style of cooking. So that's awesome. So that's uh, the good thing. So my my I, I want to do the carnival club, and I also wish uh, to do something uh, in the future uh, for uh, for business for uh, because no, there is also moral uh, issue. No, there is this famous chef. Uh, I, Anthony Bourdain, I don't know if you know him, the guy yeah. that, uh, that, 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 yeah. and, uh, he was, uh, saying that, uh, I'm not your dietitian, uh, I work for the pleasure business. It's true. Now I feel much more like that because now I'm working for, uh, carb addict, let's say like that, especially cooking Italian. I, I, I work for endorphin. I'm not feeding people with, uh, with the nutrients much. Uh, yeah, in my restaurant, if you want a steak, I will cook it in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, clarified butter and I will not put anything that, uh, if you want carnivore, I will make you carnivore 100%. But in general, the menu is in Italian restaurant, so we cannot go carnivore. It's not my restaurant. I, I, I work there. So, uh, like, there's a little bit of moral issue of feeding people things that I will not eat. So, but this, what can I do? No. I, Hey, you gotta do what you uh, gotta do to feed your family. Yeah, you know? that was uh, <laughs> the, the song uh, from uh, Tupac. Is I, I gotta get paid. That's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I have to ask you this because you're a chef. Yes. And you're Italian. I sous vide stuff a lot. Like literally, almost yeah. every single day. Is it a thing for you? I did. I used to do it. I work in Maldives. The, we had the very very strict guest. So it the the medium well, well, medium rare was not exactly medium rare. So I, I have experienced a lot with sous vide. When I was in the Philippines, we had to sous vide everything because the restaurant was big and, uh, we had a lot of recycling of stuff, you know, stuff was coming and going, coming and going. And, uh, sous vide is, is easy, make things very, very easy for the restaurant environment. There is the problem of plastic, microplastic, uh, that's, then it's up to you uh, for yourself, your choice, but. And so is helpful for sure. And also you can, uh, so be many things and then put it in the chiller and then um, just, you need to sear it and then you can eat it. It's already uh, at your perfect, uh, uh preference style of, uh, of cooking. Yeah. So is that, how, is that how restaurants do it? 
Uh, not to where I work now because there's no need for doing that to where I work. But uh, if uh, if uh, the it make things easy, let's say like that. So if you have big numbers and you cannot rely too much on the, on the quality of your uh, employer employee, so people who work with you, they are not so uh, developed for reason of uh, salary that is not my choice of reason of what's around. Uh, we cannot find anybody, so I need to make things. Uh, 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 Let's say easy, idiot uh, proof. Let's say like that. That's why I do it. <laughs> one mistake uh, for a restaurant, it's it's uh, it's the law. No, it's uh, money. So yeah, there's no much profit in the restaurant. So right, you're not that's right. So so we so we is uh, make things easy for sure. I don't say no. I don't say yes. If you like, yeah, why not? Cool. I got one more food question for you. So I I made this thing. So coincidentally, I follow a YouTube channel. Uh, it's Google, Google Foods and Sous Vide Everything. Ah, and, Sous Vide Everything, the guys. Yes, from yes. Brazil, right? Google, yeah, yes. yes. So he, yeah, he yeah, did this thing cool. called this recipe called Butter of the Gods. Have you ever okay. heard of anything like that? No, I, I call Butter of the Gods. For me, Butter of the Gods, it's a bon marlo. That's the Butter okay. of the Gods. Okay. Bon so marlo, basically, bon his is uh, uh, roasted bone marrow. So you roast it to where it's like half rendered and it's still half solid. And you take one part of that and mix it with one part of butter. But then you also have a cured egg yolk that you've cured over about two weeks. Sounds now. good. I, sounds perfect. Uh, wh what's the temperature? Uh, well, the, I well, got to get checked. Well, so get there's no rest. temperature. Yeah, you, just, you just roast, roast the bone marrow. Ah, roast, roast the bone not marrow. in so big. So it's all yeah. everything, but it doesn't so be that. Okay. No, no. So basically, you just roast the bone marrow and then mix uh -huh. it with butter. You know, okay. heat up the butter enough to mix it all together. And then yeah. great, great uh, cured egg yolk. Cured like egg yolk. Okay. It into yes, the, yeah. that mixture. And then yes. form it, put it in the fridge, slice it, put it on a steak. Oh, my God. It's, yeah, it's it incredible. Yeah, yeah, I, had never, I had never heard of cured egg yolks. Yeah, yeah, you can do many things with egg yolk. You can cure egg yolk. You can uh, you can throw them and then fry them in breadcrumbs. For example, the uova la crack, you know, it's called. You take a tray with breadcrumbs. You put an egg yolk. You cover the breadcrumbs. You put it in the freezer. And after when it's solid, you just fry. And if you don't over fry, when you cut, it's gonna be melted, and then it sounds good. But it's breadcrumbs, so it's not halal for us. But in general, it's you can do many things with egg yolk. Yeah, man. I would love to see more stuff about the like, cure. Yeah, I will. Really the, the flavor is, oh my gosh. It's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yes, yeah. So uh, what, what are your thoughts on mainstream dietary guidelines? Um, you know, the suggestions that they have versus the experience that you've had on the carnivore lifestyle. Yes, I like something because that's the word that for me is hard. Compare mentalized knowledge that's right. the problem the doctor knows about uh, how to cure with the medicine the symptoms but they don't know about uh, dietarian uh, related uh, situation the dietitian don't know about uh, evolutionary biology the biology don't know about uh, ice ages it's like everybody, they know part of something, but they don't know a lot, uh, all, the whole thing. So if you don't see the thing from far away, if you don't see it from uh, uh, the logic in this, if you don't, if you're not a uh, pattern uh, recognized, it, the way you say that, but if you don't see a pattern and, and try to make things uh, connect, uh, you see only your uh, things. And then if somebody go against you, you think it's, Against your uh, knowledge, against what you think you know, in good faith, you are uh, you against your shield, and then uh, already like the the guy from three hundred, uh, like this, uh, and then oh, you're wrong, and then you get upset, and then so uh, sometimes I, I don't blame them uh, for uh, what they do. They're just on on the defensive, and people that is not curious, and people that need to hold their uh, Italian. In Italian, we say. Uh, people that uh, need to stick to their uh, chair because their chair is the chair of power. Now, from their chair, they have power, so they are scared to lose the chair, and they have, no they have nothing else 
and they don't they are maybe too old or too uh, uh not prepared to do something else they feel like if i lose this if i change this way maybe i lose my salary my job my family my vacation my luxury or whatever so yeah that's the the main problem about that the guidelines are wrong uh, it's clear uh, i'm the proof so many people are the proof take the tri the triangle of the food pyramid put it upside down cancel erase many of those things and that's the uh, your uh, real uh, food pyramid here you know my shirt i show you Fighting the vegans. That's a cartoon. That's a cartoon from the 70s, and the vegans were the aliens from Vega. But now it's more. Uh, uh, That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a different meaning. Let's say like that. I love that. I'm gonna have to get one. <laughs> That's awesome. From 1975, fighting the vegans. And there you have it, folks. You're hearing it directly from a professional chef. Food pyramid is upside down. So yeah, like everything else, take I, I don't want to go into all, too many things that are out on top of it. But basically, everything that they tell us, it's uh, it's wrong. Right? Yeah, for sure. So, if someone was to consider the carnivore diet in in light of ailments that you have had, sleep apnea. I, I, I didn't get it. What you said? If if someone is going to start they're thinking about starting the carnivore diet and they've had issues like you have had sleep apnea uh you know overweight things like that what would be your top advice for that person well, the first thing don't do it suddenly because i did the keto suddenly it was hard on my body i did the keto because i need to go in ketosis they was on the theory to go in ketosis so i did three days of uh, of fasting and then i eat and then i you know problematic to go to the toilet and uh, weakness uh, headaches and stuff like that so don't do it suddenly uh, start to eliminate things sugar for first thing cut the sugar cut the grains and then slowly slowly cut the or uh, all the other uh things and then you you see if you don't want i mean don't have to be a carnivore we don't i don't want to want to put people in uh, in boxes uh, and say oh this guy has shown one time eating a berry let me get him he's not one of us uh, no, I don't care if you want to eat berry, if you like honey, eat honey, eat berry. If you like vegetables, better maybe fermented vegetables that are the, probably the ancestor way to, to eat the vegetables. For me, for what I understood, for what I, I see the doctor, the good doctor saying to me, these things are like kind of medicine. So the, if you probably, if you have some issue, sometimes eating, uh, uh, fermented garlic and honey, for example, or whatever, can be good, but to fix that problem, not every day, like uh, food. So, yeah, so I'm not to, I'm, I don't, I don't want to put people in, uh, in boxes. I don't, I'm not a uh, fun fundamentalist, let's say like that about, about this thing. So, but do it, uh, do it uh, slowly, but not too slowly. Do it in, uh, in weeks. Uh, one week, I, this week, no more pizza, pasta, bread. Next week, no more vegetables or broccoli, whatever. Next week, no more rice, blah, blah, blah. Until you are left only with, with the uh, classic meat. And then you see, if you're good, you're good. Then there is this thing that uh, I don't know about it. That is the gluconeogenesis. No, uh, you know what I'm talking about. For sure. After 44 years that your liver is transforming uh, sugar in fat, uh, is able to transform uh, in the way that you body anyway need the protein in sugar? No, I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. That's why probably somebody feel better to eat a little bit of fruit sometimes because uh, maybe the, the quantity of sugar that your body, the glucose that your body need, uh, you cannot make uh, all of that. You can make part of that because you never did it for uh, 40 or 50 years of your life. So now you cannot ask your liver to switch like that you're already uh, switching to making ketones that they never did any uh, uh, in, in your life now you're also asking to make uh, sugar when uh, before the sugar was everywhere in your body and it was and it was trying to to remove sugar from your body to, from your bloodstream and, and convert it in fat so now you're asking your liver to make uh, sugar because you know it's also maybe probably little bit little 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 bit of uh, fruit or something like that uh, it, it, it's not uh, it's not bad. 
Also, I tell you this, this Dr. Rick Jones, so that also is a low carb kind of uh, doctor. And there's this study on fructose that when this fructose is taken in fruit, so in the natural form, uh, it doesn't change the, the way of uh, people, of, of healing of people. Uh, there's this study of this group of people. I will link you, uh, I will send you the, the, the video, YouTube, this short video. So there's this group of people, some of them, all of them in a low carb diet, all of them. Everybody improved their metabolic syndrome. The people that were eating still a small amount of fruit improved in the same way. So there is, so there, basically, if you eat a small amount of fruit, it doesn't change the improvements of your metabolic status. So for me, after if you eat two, two pounds steak and you want to eat a little bit of berry, it doesn't make you not a carnivore or, oh no, you are paleo. Oh no, you are a shit over. <laughs> What is this? <laughs> this is not, it doesn't make sense. Don't, don't, don't go crazy about name and about, uh, and about, uh, and, and about, uh, uh thing because the, the truth is that we don't really know. I saw uh, Paul Saladino talking to Ken Berry, Dr. Paul Saladino talking to Dr. Ken Berry, and they agree basically that we don't really, really, the science is not written in stones. We are still figuring things out. So yeah, I am open minded to, to, to everything, to understand. I'm always curious. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really great advice. Um, and you hit on a, a good point with the, with the fruit. I mean, it really boils down to what works best for the individual, you know? Yeah. The goal is health, not right. uh, uh, be part of a club. If it makes you feel bad, don't eat it, right? If you're able to handle it, have at it. Awesome. So is there anything else that you wanted to touch on uh, and talk about that maybe we haven't talked about yet? No, I think, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it was a play, nice, nice chat. And maybe we can talk again in the future sometime or maybe like a group of people would be nice to, to, to have uh, sure. like more, 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 more than uh, two and uh, like this kind of, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, my, how you say, mindstorming? Yeah. Brainstorming. Yeah. Yeah. Brain, sure. Brainstorm. Yeah. yeah. So we do a, uh, a show on Tuesday night, uh, here, yeah. here in the United States, it's nine o'clock Eastern time. So I don't have no idea what time it is for you. Now is a, now it here is eight thirty PM. So for you, so nine thirty there would be morning for me. Probably. So we're two thirty PM right now here. Yeah. And you're eight thirty PM. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, so that's really it's early it's in the morning for you. There is still light here because uh, I'm in Netherlands, uh, very high, uh, close to the north to Europe. So here the sun go down slow, very very slow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The, the, yeah, we'll, the we'll have to get you on a different rain. live stream. We'll have to get yeah, you on no a different problem. live stream <laughs> than one that isn't in the middle of the night. Uh, it, no, in the middle of the night. No, but I wake up early anyway. Always, uh, I drop the kids at school, so. Um, I like, I'm, I'm a morning person. I'm a daylight person. So good. Cool. No problem. Cool. So for everybody watching, can you, uh, let everybody know where they can find you on the, on the internet? Yeah. I'm, uh, on, uh, mostly on Instagram. I have also a TikTok account. You know why? Because the, the TikTok, you put one thing and then it's 4,000 people watch it. So it's, <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's amazing. Well, then, well, I don't know if it's true with 4,000 people, the, the number they give you, but, uh, yeah, but I don't really like it. So uh, I'm not using it much. Uh, it's called anyway, the Carnival Club Netherlands, that one in, on TikTok. And maybe I will develop it in the future. Now I'm mostly on Instagram uh, with the, the iPad Carnival Chef with awesome. my food and my, and sh I share a lot of things from other people you know, in the stories from uh, politi politic things and other things. Uh, uh, not really related to food, but uh, more related cool. to my way of thinking. Yeah, I love it, man. So I'll definitely link uh, all your accounts uh, in the description below for everybody to be able to find you. And, uh, and uh, I would try to say it the Italian way. Dario. Dario, <laughs> it's that? me. <laughs> like Mario. Not, it's me, Dario. Like the Mario. <laughs> Dario, I really appreciate this time together. And uh, getting to know you a little a little bit better, um, it was truly an honor to be able to speak with you. And uh, you. I hope we get to do this again in the future. And we're definitely getting together for a live stream. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you.
Thank you very much. Take care and uh, good luck to everybody and uh, give, a, give the meat a chance. Awesome. Thanks, Dario. So Thanks, Dario, for sharing your empowering journey with us. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to the Hyper Carnivore Chef on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, where you'll find some really great content. We'd love to hear from you in the comments section about your own experiences with the carnivore diet. Tell us about the positive transformations and benefits you've encountered, and don't hesitate to share this video with anyone who might find Dario's carnivore journey both inspiring and helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Your support truly means the world to me. Thank you again. Stay amazing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.